Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. So we did number of things challenge. Hopefully you took a little bit of a sneak peek ahead and tried to do the abbreviator challenge, which is what we're going to do today. If not, no worries. We're going to go right through this. And this is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. I'm saying it in the wrong order, but it doesn't matter anymore because you guys know me. So this one is definitely doable for you. If you have done all other challenges, right? Like up until now, we've done lowercase, uppercase, switch case, aardvark, reverse, slicing, gerund, Oxford, number of things challenge. If you've gotten to this point, you should definitely be able to do this. Take some time out, read the problem, and try to do this yourself. If you're on my website, you can code right below this video. If you're on YouTube, click in the description so you can go to my website and you can see this problem and try to solve it yourself. Now, in this one, I'm going to, you know, I, I, we're going to start stepping it up a little bit, okay? I'm not going to feed you guys everything. I'm going to make it a little bit more challenging for you. So, the problem here, I want you to read how the problem is stated because usually what I do is I distill the problem into very simple, uh, easily digestible steps and then I just speak it and I give you examples that make sense. But usually you don't have me right there with you, right? When you're coding, you're generally looking at either like a textbook if you're in school or college or if you're working, you're just looking at a prompt of what somebody who hired you wants you to do. Or if you're just solving a coding challenge online, I mean, same thing. You're just looking at a prompt of what it wants you to do. So it's a good habit to get used to that and understand how these problems are laid out and be able to actually understand what each of these problems mean by yourself, okay? Because understanding the problem completely is actually 50% or more of the challenge, believe it or not. I mean, it sounds really simple and duh, but... Trust me, there have been times where I've coded for like three hours and I realized that the solution would have just taken me 10 minutes if I spent like one hour really understanding the problem because I was, turns out I was solving for the wrong thing. So with that in mind, let's jump into it. It says make a function abbreviator that given a string returns the string. If the string is less than five characters, so basically, it returns a string if the string is less than five characters. Otherwise, return the first four characters of the string followed by a period. Take a second. Think about what that means. Hopefully, you've paused the video and taken a second to understand the problem, maybe even try to code it up, but we're going to go through it right now. So basically, if I gave you anything less than five characters, then you just give me back that thing. So if I gave you something that was two letters, you just give me you just give me that thing back with the two letters, right? So if I said yo, you just give me back yo. It's already kind of abbreviated. It's pretty short. But something like um, aardvark, just limit it to its first four characters followed by a period. So that's all you have to do. And here they've given us some examples. So on line five, you can see if I call the abbreviator function on trinket, it just goes trin period, done. And if I give it something that has a less than five characters, which this does, it has four characters here, um, it just goes arg, okay? So let's code that up. Um, and there is a function called len, which actually helps you calculate the length of this. So len of, you know, let's say hello, is gonna tell you five, okay? Now I'm wondering, isn't arg five characters? Um, maybe, maybe the prompt is slightly incorrect now that I'm reading it. I think what it should say is less than or equal to five characters or less than six characters. Because otherwise it should say arg followed by a period. If I'm wrong, comment below. I would love to hear what you have to say about this. But yeah, so we're going to go with less than six characters because that's how this example is laid out. Or let's just follow this prompt and keep it uh, streamlined. So I will say if string is less than five characters, then what I want you to do is return 
that string from zero, so basically from where it starts, all the way up to the fifth character. So that's zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, remember in programming, you start from the zeroth index. So it's total is five. And when you say five here, it goes up to but not including. So it doesn't go zero, one, two, three, four, five. It stops at four, okay? So that's how this uh, range in the index function works. If you didn't know that, go back to the slicing reverse slicing challenge, and I think I explained that there as well. Okay, so I get the first four characters, and then all I have to do, oh, I'm sorry. If it's like this, just return the string. Whoops, return string. Otherwise, in the else case, we do what I was trying to do earlier. Else, we go from 0 to 5, and then we just follow that up by a period. And I think that should be good. Let's give it a try. Oh, I think, is it this? Okay. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, because they want the first four characters. Okay, my bad. So you can see that if you give me trinket, I give you back trin followed by a period, just like it says here. And if you give me arg, A-R-G, I just give you back A-R-G followed by a period, okay? So really straightforward. There's uh, not much to this, at, you know, not much to this one at all. Hmm, I'm wondering why this has a period here. Let's run that again. Hmm. If it's less than, oh, less than five characters. Len, less than, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Len of string, there we go. Yeah, okay. There. All right. Yeah, the other thing didn't even make sense. I was comparing like a string to um, like a less than statement. It kept giving me false, and then so it just went to the line 15. But okay, so this one makes sense, and we're getting back the right results, okay? So you saw how I went through it. I kind of, you know, uh, took the actual problem, broke down what the language was saying, into something that was really humanly understandable and something simple. And then from there, I proceeded to actually try to start coding the solution up. And then even when that was happening, you know, I opened up my command line a little bit to try a few things interactively that I wasn't sure about. I hope you, that you're getting that pattern. And then I started coding this thing up, right? And then there were a few mistakes that happened and that's okay. So hopefully you guys followed along up to this point and you got this challenge done. Again, comment this below if you guys got this. I would love to check it out and so would everybody else. It really helps everybody else learn in the Clever Programmer community or even if you're outside of the community, it's your first video you're watching. It helps everybody learn and whatever code you write is bringing value to everybody else, okay? So I don't care if it's wrong, just put it below. We would all love to see it and it will give us a chance to learn. Okay, that's it, guys, for this video. If you want to try out the next challenge, which is called U.S. States Challenge, Dictionary Challenges, and it's on ourofpython.trinket.io, so you can go and try it out. But until next time, this is it, guys. I love you guys so much, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.